populations in the wider region have now died, probably from a waterborne parasite. Well, let's cross over to Florida. I'm joined now by Dr. Maya Breitbart, a professor at the University of South Florida. Um, never pleasing to read anything about this. We know marine life is suffering. Um, but why is this particularly worrying and important? Yeah, thank you for having me. This is a particular concern because we know that sea urchins, especially the species that you're referring to, are really critical to coral reefs. They are herbivores, meaning that they eat plants, or in this case, fleshy algae. And corals and algae uh, are really competing for space on the coral reefs. So if the algae overgrow due to a lack of the urchins, then they will actually overtake the corals, and then there won't be an opportunity for new baby corals to settle um, on the seafloor. And so we have no idea what this is going to look like in the Red Sea, uh, because this is really an unprecedented die-off for that area. But about a year ago, um, we saw a very similar die-off in the Caribbean um, and were able to identify the pathogen involved in that. In the Caribbean, there was a die-off in the early 80s that really devastated the coral reefs and caused this phase shift from coral-dominated ecosystems to algal-dominated ecosystems. So historically, at least, this is something that could cause major ecosystem effects. Why is this happening? That is a wonderful question. Is it climate um, change? The, is it, is it the, the, the temperatures of the sea that are producing algae? It could be that climate change plays a role. We don't yet know that. In the Caribbean last year, we were able to identify a parasite. This is um, something called a ciliate. It's a single-celled parasite that's about a tenth of a millimeter long that was directly causing the disease. So we don't yet know if that same ciliate is present in these Red Sea samples, but that should definitely be a priority for research because knowing what the cause is will really help us in terms of figuring out management or treatment strategies. Okay, and what are the immediate solutions? Is there anything that can be done? The immediate solutions are, are definitely harder than the long-term solutions. Mm. So we can do our best to try to prevent the spread, um, which really involves monitoring of all the affected regions. And so the more scientists that can be involved as collaborators to monitor their local areas would be very important. That'll help us also understand how it's potentially spreading from location to location. Given the speed and the large geographic range, I think um, shipping, so boats, are, are definitely a possibility. But it's also possible that um, the pathogen can be moved via seabirds or through people's dive gear, for example. Um, it's also really important that we start to save whatever urchins are still alive um, and possibly initiate some breeding programs in captivity uh, so that potentially further down the line, once the parasite is gone, we could repopulate the reefs. Dr. Maya, many thanks for your time. Thanks for explaining.